yesterday I was telling you about these they're little wet wipes for glasses get them at the pharmacy at Walmart but there's a little little thing here and then you take your glasses and you can clean your glasses streak free very nice very nice Oh yeah, we are ready for the day. We're here in, uh, where are we? I don't know, Ontario somewhere. Is this Long Lack? One second, one second. Make, better make sure I tell you the right location. Learn me, hey! Long Lack, yeah, that's what I thought. That's what this town's on. Long Lack, Ontario, and we want to be in Hardesty, Alberta. Tomorrow night, so we got two days to get there. It's going to be two long days. Two long days of just giving her. So we better give her. Ah, so it was a great night. Perfect temperature to sleep. Not too hot, not too cold. Truck started up in the morning. That is always awesome. The brake trip, everything's working. Put her in gear, release the brakes. And we are off another day. Oh, it's exciting. I love that. It's starting to roll the first day, getting on the road. We are heavy. We're pulling 63,000 pounds of steel in the triaxle here across the country. Picked it up in St. Catharines, Ontario, close to the border with Buffalo, New York. And we're going to pull it all the way up to Hardesty, Alberta, which is between Saskatoon and Edmonton in Western Canada. Just gotta wait for the big rush hour traffic here. We gotta, oh, he put a signal on. Are you turning here then? I don't trust you. Okay, so you are turning here. A Ford pickup. Sometimes people put their signal on way too early. And I'm glad, don't get me wrong, I'm glad they're using their signals. Well, you don't need to turn it on two miles before you turn, because then I think you're turning at another, another stop, right? And then I pull out in front of you and then you honk at me and give me the finger and wonder what I'm doing. Why are you putting your signal on? I thought you were turning. But anyway, we're out here. It's going to be a good day. It's going to get a little bit cold from here. As soon as we get into Western Canada, into Manitoba, it looks like it's going to get a little bit chillier. We're going to go through some snow today. Uh, right around Ignis, Ontario is where it's going to start. I'm going to hit the thick of it around Dryden. Sort of come out the other side uh, between Kenora and Falcon Lake. Uh, doesn't really seem like it now, right? Because we've got clear skies. But according to the forecast, we're going to hit some snow later on today. But by the time we hit Manitoba, it won't be snowing anymore. But there will be a lot of snow on the ground. More than there is here in Manitoba. They got... A they got a huge snowfall last night, or yesterday, for some reason. It's April, it's my birthday month. There's no more snowing allowed after my birthday. My birthday was April 1st, and that's, that's not a joke. I was born on April Fool's Day. The joke is that it snowed in April. That's the joke. Man upstairs thinks he's funny. <laughs> We're getting close to Highway 17 where the two roads become one road and take us to the west. So the roads are getting a little bit more hilly here. We gotta go over these hills before we get to the other road and then it's, uh, it's a pretty 
decent. We avoided all the biggest hills by taking the northern route on Highway 11. Just because we're so heavy. I, I want to be a little nice to this old girl, this old truck. She's working really hard to pull this steel through here and I don't need to add any unnecessary hills to her route. Cruising, cruising along. Uh, Thunder Bay is the next big city we're gonna go through. And tonight I wanna get to at least Headingley, Manitoba. Uh, I'd love to get to Brandon, Manitoba if I could on the other side, but Portage La Prairie would be a nice, a nice place to, somewhere out there, past Winnipeg. Gotta be careful on these downhills. to go she wants to gallop nope not today I want to live I hope that I live to see the day one day that uh, they build a four-lane divided highway that connects eastern Canada and western Canada right from like Toronto and Ottawa right to Winnipeg like four-lane divided This whole day it's been sunshiny. I've been getting a tan through my window here. And then I heard reports that there was snow up ahead. Now I knew that because I looked at the weather forecast, but I was kind of hoping that eh, maybe the weather was wrong. Well, the clouds are rolling in. Or actually, we're rolling towards the clouds. Looks like I'm still gonna hit some rain, sleet, snow, freezing rain. I don't know. Hopefully not. I think I'm just going to hit some snow around the Dryden, Ontario area. And by the time I get to Kenora, it should pretty much be gone. Fun times. Got to get this essential steel to the essential oil fields. If the weather gets too bad, I have to pull over because I'm oversized. I'm not supposed to be driving in inclement weather, I think is what the wording is. So if it gets like really bad, but this is just a little bit of drizzle. I mean, we're doing pretty good. So as long as it doesn't get too much worse, we should be good to go. Judging by the forecast, this should be, like I looked at the road ahead and this should be the worst of it here right now. So if this is all, this is all mother nature's got to offer me today. Hey, totally cool with that. We should be able to make it past Winnipeg then. Well, this has been the whole day, just driving. But uh, the rain turned into a little light snow, but not too bad. And now we're just about at the Manitoba border. We're about to cross into Western Canada and it looks like everything is cleared up, just like the weather forecast said. Go figure, some news was actually correct. That's good to hear, good to hear. It's not all bad. It's looking like I'm probably about Eh, I don't know, a half hour from the Manitoba border? Maybe. Just in time to get me out of Ontario before sunset. Because after sunset, I gotta find a place to park. I'm not supposed to drive on these two lane roads in Ontario at night. So, we'll be in Manitoba before then, and then I can keep on going. I got another three hours left on my clock. Been driving for 10 hours today already. Uh, 
so it looks like we'll be able to get around Winnipeg, close to Brandon, maybe Portage La Prairie. Yeah, we'll get a bit past Winnipeg, I think. We'll, we'll see how we feel once we get there. I'm about an hour and a half from the east side of Winnipeg. Well, the snow is starting to come down a little bit more, but that's okay because there's the clear sky up ahead. Look at that beautiful stuff. Oh, I'm so sick of snow. I am so sick of snow. I am the worst Canadian ever. If it never snowed in Canada again, I wouldn't even be sad. Nah. You know what, if we just moved the snow line up to like the territories, so if you wanted to go snowmobiling, you could just like go up to Yukon or Alaska or Northwest Territory, something like north. Yeah, go do your snowmobile and have your fun, your skiing, your snowboarding up there. If it never snowed here, if the climate warmed up, I wouldn't be upset. I'm still waiting. They keep telling me it's going to warm up. So far, it hasn't. It's actually gotten colder, if anything. And it's snowing in April. I was told that I would have tropical beachfront property by this time. And here we are. We're coming up to the Manitoba border. I think this sign here is going to say something off on the left. This is two kilometers to the Manitoba boundary. And then it's our two crests. The crest of Ontario with uh, the three maple leaves and the crest of Manitoba with the bison. It's a good day, it's been a good day, you know? Nothing to really complain about. Just a average day, I'd say. Nothing to really tell you, but nothing to complain about either. And we're just rolling along. Doing our bit to keep things moving. Okay, here comes the Manitoba sign off on the right. You ready? Okay. We're about to cross into the west. Oh, there's a check stop coming up. Okay. That's right, they're checking. They gotta check to make sure that I'm not sick. That's right. All self-isolate, 14 days. Critical services exempt. <laughs> I am critical services. Hauling critical steel for the critical oil fields. Never felt so important. But yeah, if you cross provincial boundaries in Canada, you gotta self-isolate for 14 days. That means you go straight to your house, you don't go to the grocery store, you don't stop at the gas station unless you absolutely have to. You go straight home and close the door behind you and you don't come back out for 14 days. You call your friends, you call your family, you call somebody else to go get your groceries and stuff for you. You gotta go straight home. except for us essential people. And if you think about it, it's, it's not really that special being essential. We're the ones most, well, not most at risk. We're, we're, we're the ones that are more at risk. The people who are most at risk are the people working in the hospitals. And once again, give a shout out to our healthcare workers. You know, I, I, the way I've been thinking about it is, you know, America has a massive military. There are brothers to the south, brothers and sisters down there. There's a massive military, they're very proud of it. I'm proud of it, man. I'm not even American, I'm proud of their military. That's awesome, right? That's their thing. You know, you got you need a war? America's your guy. He they are good at it. They are really good at war. For us, we put that same amount of effort into our healthcare system. Healthcare is our thing. So when a crisis like this comes along, it's sort of like, you know, a war came along to the U.S. They're prepared for that. This pandemic showed up in Canada. We got this. This is what we invest pretty much all of our time, energy, and money into up here. This is this is sort of our thing. So a big shout out to our, our healthcare workers at the, the front lines, our soldiers. I hope you guys all have enough equipment. I hope things are getting better. I hope there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Let's just say that by the time you watch this. But I'm still out here moving stuff around, trying to keep the economy moving. You know, we we gotta keep, keep things moving. We can't stop everything. So keep building stuff if you can. Social distance, but keep building stuff. I'll bring your stuff to you. Portage La Prairie. 
pulling into the Flying J here. It's not a 24 hour, but it's the best we got. You'll see it in a second, it'll pop out of the night. I got, how much time here? Hey, tell the good people. You have zero hours and 15 minutes of remaining drive time. And that means we gotta pull in here. This is where we will make our home tonight. It's gonna be a long day, but we can do it all in one day tomorrow if we don't have any problems. The rodeo in here, yikes. Wow, that was bumpy. Wow. Driver Joshua Geesbrick must go off duty in zero hours and 14 minutes to meet off duty rules. How dare you speak my name? It's creepy. Why do you do that? That's new. She only started doing that today. I never told her what my name was, so I don't know who did. It was one of you, wasn't it? Creepy.